Hello, it's video tutorial number 10, making a cycle module. Now, we have actually already made a cycle module and um, put it away, but we're going to make a new one today. When we last left our MIDI module, we had managed to make something where we could play multiple chords. Nice and as well change it to other voices and as well added in our what do you call this thing pitch shifter there that's operated by the mouse so here goes that didn't work at all oh that's because I turned it off there I did it again Well, with such an auspicious beginning, let's make the most of our time here today. Um, of course we could go and use our old patch, but let's really brush up on our ability to steal quickly. So let's pull this easy DAC out of here. We'll unlock our pa we'll unlock our patcher and pull this easy DAC out here. There it is. Now we option click on it. That's alternate. Holy God! Sometimes those help patchers come up with a lot of vengeance. Um, there's the EasyDAC help file, and as you may recall from the last time we did this, um, we actually found a better help file for the cycle object. So without going through all the trouble to cut and paste this, I'm just going to unlock this patcher and find the help object for cycle. Oh, look at that. There it is. Let's unlock it, copy that whole thing, and command, uh, command C, and just close these windows, and paste it right in there. Hey, come on over here. And we can get rid of this one, and happiness abounds. So, what do we need to do? to get our Hertz from up here that cycles per second capital H small z Hertz and velocity of course this is a MIDI velocity number between 0 and 127 to affect our um, our cycle object down here which will lock and turn on momentarily and see if it's working oh it is beautiful beautiful but so horrible too Okay, so what we need to do is unlock our patcher, and we're going to have to affect this number with this number. These are both hertz, so that's great. We're happy about that. And then we need to do something with a 0 to 127 number. Now, what we can do is type the letter N and write scale. We know that the number coming out of um, of the uh, MIDI up there is between 0 and 127. So th that's our range for the input. And now all we have to do is figure out what is the range that we need for the... here we'll just click over here on the gain object and go over here to the inspector and look at its display range is negative 70 to 6.0 so let's just type that into the scale object negative 70 and 6 a point zero. there it is and we will connect our output here to our scale object and then we will connect our scale object to our gain we will lock our patcher cross our fingers Oop! now uncross your fingers and let's try to actually play it there's a whoa yes 
we see a different problem. Let's change this to piano for a moment. Yeah, I can hear two notes, but somehow we have to shut off the piano. Um, I could just delete some of these patch chords, but let's be more permanent about it. What we need here is somehow some way to control these gates. So let's type N for a new object, type gate, space, two to get two outlets. Oh, what the heck, let's get three outlets. Why not? We uh, will build in some expandability for the future. Three objects, there they are. Okay, and then we'll type some messages because as you scroll over this, you will see, well, as you zoom out a little bit and then scroll over it, you'll see that this is the gate controller and then this is where the input comes in and these are the three outlets. Output three, output two, currently closed output, one currently closed. So let's type a message, one. Another message, two. Another message, I'm just hitting the M key, three. We'll get these all lined up very nicely. And connect them utilizing our famous um, shift and click. Let off the shift button now. There we go. Okay. And because I know what's about to happen, what I'm going to do is instead of connecting. Oh, I've already done it. I've messed up here. We'll end up doing this all day if we don't find a better way to do it. So let's make another new object. Type the letter S for send and then uh, voice gate. No spaces. Send voice gate. And now uh, option click on that so that you can duplicate it. Change the S to an R and we have our little receive voice gate and then we know that they will work. Okay? Let's move these wires, these patch cords, over to the send and receive because I just hate doing this over and over and you'll see why momentarily. Okay, so there's our voice gate controller. Here is our gate and we can just check and make sure it's working by locking our patcher and hitting one and then unlocking our patcher and we'll see that gate one is currently open gate <laughs> gate output two is currently closed and gate output three is currently closed and then let's just for the heck of it lock our patcher and check gate three and we'll unlock it again and scroll over these Gate 1 is closed, gate 2 is closed, and gate 3 is currently open. If you would like it always to open on the same default mode, you can type in here which gate you would prefer that to be. I'm going to say gate 1 because MIDI um, is always ready to play almost all the time. So now when uh, your patch fires up, Gate one is always going to be open until you change it. Okay, good. So let's take this thingy, this group, stick them up here so they're out of the way. And then we're going to put this over here. Like so. And then we're going to copy it three times. So drag it over here, about there, drag another one about mm, over here. You can move your little toggle over a little bit so we can get it a little bit further over there and be neat. You know how I love neat. And then let's finally get one more 
of these gates over here. You'll realize why in just a moment, and that is this. All of these gates are going to switch at the same time because they're receiving the message from voice gate, one, two, or three. So they're all going to switch at the same time. Over here, we want the MIDI to switch on and come out gate one. Route that patch cord. We can't put up with just laying around. Okay. Over here, um, we want the volume also to come out gate one because that's going to be our MIDI supply. And then we take the zero that is the volume and route it right here to the input. Okay. We can check and make sure this works by coming here. Well, let's hit three first to make sure it doesn't work. Oh, <laughs> it still works down here. Let's hit two and we should hear nothing. Oh, no, no, no. This doesn't run through a gate yet. Let's hit one and see if we hear the piano. Maybe, maybe not. Let's get back to that. We got to disconnect this thing because it's so noisy. Okay, so with our other gates, unlock your patcher, move this thing up here, connect this patch cord to that inlet, and now we're going to use gate two to go right back to our scale object. There we go. That's where it went before, as you may recall. And then we'll take this patch cord and also connect it to gate two. And we'll connect the hertz to, I always put a little dog leg in there just to get them to work. There we go. So when you move them around, the uh, patch cords bend nicely. There we go. Okay. And now we'll lock it and say one and we can't hear a thing. There could be so many reasons. Let's take a look here. Currently open. This gate's currently open. This is... Maybe we need to send it some... Whoops. Maybe it's lost its volume reading or something. Oh! <laughs> There's the answer. I forgot to connect this. I was going to say it's not fair, but it's, a, it's always fair. It's fair! Okay, let's see now. There's our piano. Now let's hit gate number two and we should hear our... Cool. And then gate three should be nothing. And it sure enough is. All right. Well, that's pretty awesome. Now, if you wanted to, you could just unlock your patcher and encapsulate this by going to edit and encapsulate. There it is, and let's call it uh, Patcher Cycler. Nice. There it is, and we'll reroute our patch cords because we just hate when they look like that. Alright. So, Let's check it out now. Lock our patcher. Here's number one. And number two. Uh-oh. Monophonic. But you know what? That's for another day. So we got our Cycler module built. And I will be back to explain how to do multiple voices when you're making your own noisemaker. MIDI, of course, is set up for it. 
it has a whole MIDI synthesizer out there waiting to do multiple voices but this only has a single voice because there's only a single cycle object in there. I will be back to tell you how to solve that problem but until then that's the end of video tutorial number 10 making a cycle module. Mm -hmm.